Okay, so if we know how to make single bonds and double bonds now, how do we make triple bonds? Well, the process is actually very similar to making double bonds. We made a double bond by sideways overlap of two p orbitals. So we needed to leave a p orbital free when we did the hybridization for the individual atoms. If I'm gonna form a triple bond, I just need two p orbitals free so that I can form that type of sideways overlap twice. So that looks uh, a little bit like this. If we take this simple molecule, CH, CH, where there's a carbon-carbon triple bond, Again, starting with my atomic orbitals, the 2s and the 3p orbitals, if I leave two p orbitals free, I'll make two sp hybridized orbitals. Again, it's sp because there's only one p, whereas sp2 meant there was two p orbitals in that hybridization, and sp3 means there's three p orbitals in the hybridization. Here, I just have sp, and I've left two p orbitals untouched. Now, if I look at what, uh, what the depiction for this is, the two sp hybridized orbitals get as far away from each other as possible. So those are in gray and those are linear. And then the two remaining p orbitals simply sit perpendicular to each other and they have two lobes uh, on each side of the nuclei or the nucleus. And each of those orbitals, not each lobe, the two lobes consist or make up one orbital, but each orbital contains one electron. Now, if I bring those two carbons that are both sp hybridized together, I can form a direct single bond by directly overlapping two sp orbitals, one from each carbon. And I can make an sp, uh, I can make a, a single bond by directly overlapping the sp orbital with a hydrogen atom. And that gives you your two single bonds. The two, the extra two bonds, the double and the triple bond, are formed by sideways overlap of the p orbitals that are remaining. So I can have one overlapping above and below the plane, that will give you one pi bond, and then one going in and out of the plane will overlap to give you the other pi bond. And so we notice that single bonds are sigma bonds, double bonds are composed of one sigma and one pi bond, and triple bonds are composed of one sigma and two pi bonds. Another representation of the same molecule can be shown here. Again, the purple are the sp hybrid orbitals, the pink are your unhybridized just p orbitals, and you can form sigma bonds by direct overlap between the carbon and carbon or between the carbon and the hydrogen. You use the hybridized orbitals for that. And the unhybridized orbitals, those remaining p orbitals, are then used to form those bonding regions, those pi bonds. So we can summarize hybridization a little bit, and hopefully this is helpful for understanding how atoms actually bond much more in, in much more detail than a simple Lewis structure. So for hybridization, it really all depends on the number of electron domains that we have. If we have four electron domains, we take a simple tetrahedral geometry and the hybridization is sp3. Four electron domains, I need four equal orbitals, so I have sp3 hybridization. Three electron domains, trigonal planar is the electron domain geometry and the hybridization is simply sp2. I don't need, I don't need four equal orbitals, I just need three. Two electron domains, in this case, it's linear, and now the hybridization is just sp. I don't need four or three equal orbitals, I just need two. And generally, those remaining two unhybridized p orbitals are used for multiple bonding. Additionally, just to overview our types of bonds, we have single bonds, which are sigma. Sigma means direct overlap of orbitals. Double bonds are composed of one sigma and one pi bonds. So we have a direct overlap and a sideways overlap. And then triple bonds are one direct overlap, one sigma, and two pi or two sideways overlaps. So let's just do a few problems here and see if we can figure out the hybridization for each of the central atoms in the following molecules. So if we take BF3, for example, we can draw out that structure, BF3, and we can simply draw out the Lewis structure for this, add the lone pairs in, 
Remember that boron is happy with only six electrons, so it's happy just the way it is. And we can know that there's three electron domains, electron domains around boron. And so in this case, boron must be sp2 hybridized. SO3 2 minus, we've seen that one before. Lone pair on sulfur, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen with the full suite of lone pairs. I can say that there are four electron domains, a lone pair and three single bonds. And so in this case, I must have sp3 hybridization. CO2, if I draw it all out, I form two double bonds to satisfy carbon. And so carbon itself has only two electron domains. Two electron domains indicates that I will have just sp hybridization. And we can see here that I need the remaining two p orbitals to form the two double bonds, one on each side or one with each oxygen. PCl3, if I draw this out, lone pair, Cl, Cl, Cl where I can fill out the lone pairs on each of the chlorines. It looks like I've got four electron domains around the phosphorus. So this would be sp3 hybridization. It needs four orbitals, three of them to form the single bonds with chlorine and one of them to hold the remaining lone pair. So this is an overview then of how molecular bonding actually occurs in molecules. And it's important for us to be able to recognize this, not only to be able to draw a three-dimensional shape, but to understand where the electrons actually are in the molecule.